How's everyone doing? So today we're going to be starting a new series uh, where we basically just mess around in the workshop and try to code some new mechanics into it. Um, if you're not really interested in tutorials on how to do things, I will be posting the share code plus a list of all of the variables down in the description below. So going into it, this is what we'll be creating, um, a projectile that can be uh, affected by just changing the initial velocity of the projectile. So if we switch this down to, oh, not 10,050, down to something like 10, and restart the game, we can see that the uh, arc of the projectile now, actually entry. decreases significantly as Build well as the speed. And so instead of it being almost like a uh, Hanzo arrow or for instance, um, that specific speed is the same as uh, Baby Diva's primary fire. Uh, it's now more similar to like a lobbed grenade. Um, and so with this basic formula essentially we're doing with the projectile, you can pretty much create any projectile you want, whether it's a Hanzo arrow or a Symmetra um, right click or even a Torbjorn turret. You just have to essentially add on to it, and that's, that is basically what I want this series to be, is um, us as a community going through and adding on to these mechanics as we discover what this workshop is capable of. Okay, so we're back here inside a fresh project. Uh, you can see over here, all I've done so far is basically make it to where the only map is King's Row, and the only hero is Torbjorn with his hammer. Um, that is just for testing purposes, and I like Torbjorn because he's short and funny. Um, and inside the editor, all I've added so far is a rule called init or initiate. Um, and the conditions in here, all we have so far is has the event player spawned in, so saying that the event player has selected their character, and is that character Torbjorn? If that is uh, the case, go ahead and disable all of uh, the abilities. So the first thing we're going to want to do is add a rule where we will initiate the projectile. This will be for each player. We'll go ahead and add some condition uh, conditions, kind of same as initiate. So we'll say has spawned um, event player equals true and also is alive. We don't want to be shooting projectiles all out of our dead corpse. Um, what else? Is primary fire held? And we'll, yeah, we'll go ahead and add a hero condition in there as well. Okay, so, so far our conditions are saying, basically, if our player has spawned in, and is alive, and they're holding down their primary fire, and they are Torbjorn, do this set of actions. Okay, so the first thing we need to think of uh, when we are talking about a projectile is something that every single entity in a game will have, and that is an X, Y, and Z coordinate. Um, with this projectile, we want this starting point to be the eye position of the event player. The reason we want this is so that way our projectile will look like it's coming out of a first person view. And so what we can do here is go to set player variable p equal to the i position of the event player. And so what this will actually do is set player variable p to a vector. And the vector will be the world coordinates of the I position of the event player, which we will um, add HUD text to the game and everything like that, so that way we could see live uh, views of what is happening with our variables as the game is going on. The next variable we want to set, though, is the initial velocity of the projectile. And this initial velocity will be an actual equation. And so what we'll do is we will multiply the value of facing direction of event player times the player variable s which we will uh, create after this and so what this equation will do is it will take <coughs> the vector coordinates of basically where the player is looking and multiply it by an initial velocity that we will set in just a second um, Luckily, Overwatch actually makes this uh, setting velocity a lot easier for us than what most languages would. 
So normally you would have to get the angle at which you're aiming in the vertical and horizontal direction, get the radians of that angle, and then add that to a vector. This facing direction of action does all of that for us, and then multiplying that by the initial velocity will basically just give us an acceleration in a certain direction. And so now so far we have every time that the game detects that uh, Torbjorn is essentially holding down his primary fire, we will set the vector position equal to the eye position of the event player, and then we will also set the initial velocity. So something else we also have to do is set that player variable s, which is, again, the initial speed, sorry. Um, we will set it to something a little bit lower uh, to start off with to 10. And we want to set this actually before the velocity so that way um, the velocity has the correct numbers that it needs to do the correct calculations. After that, we need to set the mass of the object. So we will set player variable m equal to, we'll say one for now. We also need to set the gravity. So we'll set player variable g equal to, we'll say 9.8. Next, we will add a variable delta time. Delta time is normally a very low num number. In this case, we will use 0 0.016, which is actually the minimum weight we can currently do inside the workshop. We will also add a variable time, which will keep track of uh, the total time our projectile is in the air. And so we are actually done with all of the math that is involved when it comes to initiating a projectile. And so what I want to do next is actually add a new rule called initiate HUD, where we will basically just make a HUD that shows the variables that we are currently using. And so the three variables that I mainly want to see is the player position, sorry, uh, the velocity, and the time the projectile is in the air. And so we'll do, again, uh, similar conditions to all of our other ones. Has spawn equals true, um, is alive, oops, if I do not have a spell, is alive is true, um, is hero of the event player Torbjorn. And that should actually be it for this. Oops. And so we will create a hub text. Um, it will only be visible to the event player. The string, uh, we actually will just put player variable p. Um, so we'll order it one. We will make this one purple. Yeah, sure. All right, let's create another. Again, visible to the event player. We will say player variable. This one we will do velocity. We will put this in one and let's make this one red yeah and then let's create another we will say create hud text and do the event player and set this one equal to play variable t for the time we will put this one at the bottom and let's make this one green all right so now we actually have our hud in there as well so we should be able to actually load into the match and whenever we uh, use our primary fire, we should see some of these variables populate. And so they do. We can open up the inspector to see what is happening. I actually have my inspector disabled currently. Um, we could pull back. And so we could see whenever primary fire is used, first thing that happens is P is set to a vector. So the I position of the event player we set s to the velocity and then v to the direction we are facing times the velocity and so if we had the math for the uh, projectile arc put into place this would be sent immediately in the direction uh, the event player was looking when um, this action was called and so if we take a look back at our drawing actually we can see that we have already grabbed the initial speed at which the projectile will be launching in the x and y direction, as well as the rotation that the projectile needs to grab the correct direction um, that the event player is looking at. And so, we can actually go back in here 
and start adding in effects to start creating a projectile. And so the first thing we will do is actually create a new effect. And we will leave this uh, visible to everybody. We'll say sphere, we'll make this purple. Um, and for the radius, we'll make it 0.25. Uh, however, for this starting position, we want this to be equal to the uh, position of player variable P. And so now if we restart, every time we hold down left click or press left click, uh, we should now have a sphere spawning at the eye position of our player. Uh, however, currently you will notice that it is not deleting the older sphere. It is just creating a new one and teleporting all of them to that new location. So we'll head back to the editor. We will add a new variable. Um, we will say play variable L, which eventually this will be an array of all of the entities we have created so we can reference those later. And so L will stand for the list of arrays or effects. Um, and so for right now though, we won't worry about arrays. We'll just set this variable. We'll set it to the last uh, created entity. Um, and then we will add a skip option at the beginning of our initiation. Not skip option, a skip action. Um, and we will say if uh, the entity still exists, um, the entity uh, player variable L, if that is true, no, if that is false, sorry, then skip one line. So when we say skip if it exists equals false, that's meaning if it's true, go ahead and proceed to the next line. If it's false, meaning it doesn't exist, skip this and go ahead and create a new one. And so what we'll do is if it proceeds, we will, wow, English, uh, we will actually just destroy the effect player variable L. And we will bring that back to the top. Uh, and we will go back into our game. We will restart the game. And now, every time now we entering. initiate a new projectile, if um, an old projectile is still out, we should see in the inspector that it is being deleted before the new one is being called. And so we'll go and open up the editor, and we'll see that. Uh, we'll go back to the beginning. It checks to see if there is a, an entity already in existence. There's not, so it goes ahead and skips that. Goes back through, creates the effect, gets called again, skip if, and then it does destroy it if there is already a variable or an entity in that location. Okay, so now that we actually have a uh, entity being spawned whenever we left click, let's go ahead and start working on some movement for this projectile. So let's create a new rule. We'll call it uh, the projectile movement. Again, ongoing each player. Add typical conditions. Um, actually, with these conditions, these conditions will only be true if our projectile has been initiated. So we can actually skip out on a lot of these conditions that check to see if the player has spawned because this will only be called if those other ones have already been called. And so what we could do is actually go straight into the checks for the movement of the projectile. So we'll actually keep it kind of simple for uh, just this first episode. And we will only move the projectile while the projectile height is higher than the uh, foot location of the player. And so what we will say is if the Y components of player variable p is greater than or equal to the y components of the position of the event player. So what this is actually saying is run these actions if the y component of our projectile is greater than the foot position of our event player. And as soon as that is done, or as soon as that is no longer true, stop what we are doing inside of this loop. And so we will set this weight to the minimal weight. 
and perfect. So we basically have the loop for our projectile motion actually set up, and now we just have to add in all of the equations to get the uh, projectile to actually arc and move in the direction we want. And so there's actually two more variables we need to set before we can start doing the uh, motion of the projectile. First variable is the force of gravity. Um, basically, the number, the variable g being converted into a vector, and so we'll just call the force of gravity e, um, and we will set this equal to a vector. Uh, none of the x and z location, because gravity is only acting downward. And so we will actually multiply uh, negative 1 because, not negative 12, negative 1 because gravity is downwards, it's a negative number, times the multiplication of gravity. Um, and we will multiply gravity times our uh, mass of our object. And so that way our object will fall faster the heavier it is. The next variable we need to set is the force that is being applied to the, uh, to the projectile. And so the reason we are setting player f equal to, or player variable f equal to e, so the force equal to the force of gravity, is because if we ever decided to add in drag or friction or anything like that into this code, we would then just add onto this force. And so we would add the force of gravity uh, plus whatever force, whatever other forces we have. In this case though, the only force that we have acting on the object is gravity. So now we can actually go back down to our movement and we can actually start updating the velocity and the position of the player. So the first thing we'll update is the velocity. And so we'll set play variable v equal to, um, we want to add the old velocity, so play variable v, uh, and we want to add the, basically an equation. So we want to multiply the division between two numbers, um, and we want to divide player variable f, so our force um, divided by our mass, And we actually want to multiply all of this by our delta time. And so what this will basically do is set velocity equal to what our next velocity would be in 0 0.016 seconds. Um, after that is set, we can then set our next position. So set player variable p equal to, again, the old position. So player variable p. And then um, we want to actually multiply our velocity times uh, delta time. Again, so we are grabbing our position, um, or what our position would be in 0 0.016 seconds. Uh, after that, we'll go ahead and update our time, just showing that our projectile is still in the air. Um, and so we'll set t equal to add our current time. Uh, plus delta time. And so, this is actually all of the movement for our projectile. Uh, however, you'll notice if you've already ran this code that this never gets called, and that's because we never do an initial movement of the projectile. And so what we actually have to do in this case is um, whenever we initiate the projectile, we have to do the first movement. And so what we'll do is actually copy um, all three of these actions and just paste them once up into the initiation of the projectile. And so we'll paste the update of the velocity, we will paste the update of the position, and then also we will paste the um, update of the time. And so now we can actually go back, we will restart now entering King's Load up toward. We should theoretically have a working projectile. However, you will notice that it stops at the foot position of the player. Um, 
and it is completely functional. So we could go in here and actually update the initial speed from say 10 to uh, 50 and we will have the speed of the projectile we saw at the beginning of the video. Um, however, you will notice that there is absolutely no hit detection and at higher speeds uh, the projectile is as smooth. And so that is stuff that we will be touching on in the next episode. Uh, where we will start smoothing out the projectile and we will start adding uh, detection for walls, players, etc. And we'll start adding some limitations to the projectile. So how far it can go, uh, we can start getting into um, having multiple projectiles out at the same time, um, binding those projectiles to certain abilities, uh, instead of having it just hit a wall and explode like uh, we did in the demo version of the projectile, we can start adding physics to it to where we can have projectiles that bounce. Um, there's a lot of possibilities with making your own custom, uh, not even projectiles, just really custom effects in this game. Uh, I feel like effects is one of the things that aren't used to their full ability. Um, and so that's kind of what the series is going to be getting into is us just playing around with those mechanics and seeing what we can accomplish as a community.